None of our ponds are built using liners. All of them are built with clay. And we were lucky that we have clay. Um, and clay just holds water like sort of like a magical thing. Um, if you are building a pond in a garden, I would recommend a fiberglass liner because they're nice and neat and tidy and they fit in with the garden really well. Uh, plastic liners are okay, but they're harder to hide the plastic bits. But if you're building a bigger pond, then it's much better to not use a liner at all and to just use clay. And if you haven't got clay, then, then line it with your clay, you can get clay in. Um, and um, the result is really good. Uh, this one here we made about seven years ago, six years ago. Um, and it uh, holds beautifully now. It, it did take quite a while to hold the water a few years before it completely filled up to the top. Uh, but now it always does and it hasn't rained for ages. We've had a really uh, cold dry spell. And look at the overflow pipe, it's still got water in it. Um, and, uh, and it's uh, right at the very top. So clay holds water really, really well. One of the really good things about not having a liner is you can always like change the shape of your pond or add a little bit. Like we can add this little inlet or something. Um, and that's okay, you can just do that. Um, when, you, when you make it, you put your pond, just, just bash the edges. Now, I've noticed when they dig them with the digger, he bashes the, the sides with the, with the digger to compress the clay. But uh, whether you do that or not, the eventual result is that it will hold water. It's easy to tell if you've got a clay soil. Um, just get a bit of wet mud uh, and uh, with that bit of weed and just roll it in your fingers like that. And you can see that's microscopic particles. That's obviously clay. If it's sandy soil, you'll feel the lumps of little gritty bits of lumps of sand. And if you've got a sandy soil, because you've got the air pockets between the grains of sand, water just pours through it really, really quickly. Um, but clay soil holds the water and compacts and uh, holds the water in and, and it works much better than anything else. We've just had a really long cold spell and you see, I don't know if you can see, but there's big chunks of ice still on the pond and it's all melting now and we're going to have a storm soon and the wind's just picking up and it's getting all dark and gloomy and there's a storm approaching. But uh, the pond doesn't need topping up at all, it's still right at the top. Um, and all, all this is just clay, just all holds together really well. And um, it's very good for building banks with as well. They hold together really well because it doesn't erode as quickly as, as sand does if you've got water running over it or rain. The clay holds together really well and more so when you've got little plants holding it together with their roots. Also when you're using clay, uh, you can make much more elaborate shapes and much more steep bits and you don't have to get a liner to fit awkward bits and you don't have to find a fiberglass one just the right shape. Um, it's much easier to, uh, to make like here where we've got a steep uh, slope coming right out of the water um, and it would be very difficult to do that with a liner. Um, but of course um, the ponds are permaculture ponds, they are there to top up the water table and if they have a liner in them then you're cutting them off from nature. Um, it's, you're making something you've got to top up with water whereas these ponds are designed to be in the wetter places. They catch the rainwater, they store the rainwater, and then they gradually release water out into the water table, um, reducing the, uh, the or rather increasing the drought resistance of the land by having a higher water table and more access to water for trees and plants and um, better drought resistance for your whole land and the whole area. Ponds are incredibly good for wildlife. All types of animals drink from the ponds. And then um, the, the water table uh, is very good for making all the plants have a drink as well when it doesn't rain. Um, we have like to have lots of different uh, environments, um, some wet bits, some dry bits, different bits facing different directions to get different amounts of sunlight. So we try and create as many different uh, habitats as possible for as many different plants and animals to be happy here. This is a much newer pond, it's about two years old and it's never filled right at the, the top yet, it's that far from the top um, and it, a little bit, every time we get a lot more rain it, it settles a little bit higher and a little bit higher as the clay builds up resistance um, and uh, it, it does take a few years. Um, where you're standing will be the edge of the pond um, 
and this area here we're sort of over time digging out and this will all be channels of water here. Um, this is a woodland island here and another woodland island there. So we'll have like a little bit of channels coming up. Um, there's one channel coming here, going into the pond here. Um, and then this one here, going into the pond here. And, uh, and this one here goes all around this island and joins up with the pond here. And then over there, we've already got uh, two other islands cut out, so eventually we'll have five islands. But the advantage, of course, with having it this clay rather than a liner is that you can chop and change and add bits. You certainly can do that with a liner, but um, there's always some minds can be changed and new ideas come but if you've got like a liner you can't do that you'd have to pick it out and put a whole new liner in but uh, it's much more versatile with clay and much more practical and um, you can change your mind and do different things as well and it doesn't matter also with a clay pond it's uh, much easier to go through the balancing act of getting everything the right depth and around every feature um, this pond has never filled up fully yet. Uh, when it does, this is the, the, the bit where it would flow over and the water would pour through here and go to a ditch and a little valley that goes through the garden and then into the woods and it wiggles through the woods a bit and then it goes into another pond. So it's, uh, it, will, it won't cause a problem, it will go where I want it to go, but it's just the depth around all the islands and all the other features, balancing all, all out, even with a spirit level. It's really complex and difficult, so the best thing to do is wait till it fills up and then I can measure it how I want it to be. Maybe some of the islands need to be a bit higher, maybe this needs to be lower, maybe this needs to be higher. I'm not sure, but I can't find out for sure until this water reaches here, so I'm just leaving it like this for now. But of course, if it was a liner, that would be more or less impossible to do. Um, so it, the, not having a liner makes it much more flexible. And um, one really important thing is to always have somewhere nice to sit um, so that you can uh, look at what you're building in a nice comfy place and uh, you have loads more ideas by doing that um, just by the fact that you're relaxing and looking at where you work and what you're building um, it just you get 10 times more ideas uh, so, so it's a really good investment having a nice comfy bench in a nice sheltered spot so you can uh, really be creative and come up with all sorts of new plans and ideas for what you're doing. Here which wiggles through the garden is uh, the overflow for the pond and I wiggle it to make the journey of the water longer so it has more time to soak into the soil less and uh, more time before it gets to the sea and then just behind me it goes into the woods and continues to wiggle so it really slows down the, the, the um, journey of the water. This is the uh, pond that's uh, it's not actually built yet. In fact, ooh, whoa, quite a lot of ice still, perhaps I won't stand in the pond. But this one is really a topsoil quarry, it's not a pond yet. It will be a pond, but not exactly where it is. So um, it's holding the water really well because it's clay, but it's uh, it looks like a pond and it acts like a pond. I could even row around it, but it's uh, technically not a pond yet. But this will be the third pond. This is the fourth pond. It's been very dry for a while and it doesn't have water at all yet. Um, I've noticed though that the, the ground is a bit more gritty here and it's possibly not as good as, uh, as, uh, as the rest of the ground for holding water because it's not held water yet. It does for a week or two, but then it just disappears. Um, and I'm considering whether or not to get some clay from elsewhere and then line this with clay. But I'm going to see how it goes. Um, at the moment it's dry for right now. Um, so this is my stepping stone. But, uh, all this should be water, but... Get some clay from further up um, by the other pond 
just uh, when it's wet just spread it over and uh, see how that is um, but at the moment it's pretty rubbish the holding water this one but it's only about three months old so it's probably not uh, built up all the uh, um, clay in between the cracks and the soil like it does so maybe just a bit of time is all it needs I would always recommend building ponds with clay but particularly if you have clay soil um, it's just very easy just dig a hole and you've got a pond um, but if you haven't got a clay soil um, it's really really good to put a pond somewhere that is naturally damp and where the water table is very low particularly if you don't have a, uh, a clay soil but where, whatever soil you have it's always best to put a pond where it's naturally wet um, and if you do have a sandy soil and you want to line it with clay um, there's a lot of difference of opinion of how thick you should put the clay and how you should put it on and everything like that but uh, I would say probably eight inches would probably be enough more if it's particularly sandy or gritty um, and then more if you need it but it does take a few years before it totally um, takes effect it take uh, our top pond it took it four years to get fully uh, uh, to fill with water and to stay like that um, like it is now it hasn't rained for a long time and it's still right at the top um, um, but it, it does take them yeah, about four years I'd say to do that um, but what you have is a much better result in the end and you can cut it into much more intricate shapes um, and you can raise and lower it without it causing any trouble or without having to replace expensive liners there's no danger of any kind of puncture or anything and the clay does tend to repair itself and the water does seem to naturally want to hold onto soil and we get all the water for all of our plants all of our vegetables, everything uh, from these ponds. Uh, all the rainwater that falls on the land is all channeled down into the ponds, um, and uh, we, we've always got water. And I reckon that we could probably go three years with no rain, and we still have enough water. I mean, hopefully, we wouldn't have that, but uh, we've just got incredible uh, reservoir of water in these three ponds. And that's a really good thing to have. It's a really good uh, water security. And if there's like a hose pipe ban or something that doesn't affect us because we've got our own reservoir of water. And it's also very good for wild animals, uh, particularly in dry weather. And we do have rather a lot of uh, animals that come here, including this heron, which uh, one day I'm going to be able to get it on film. But it's very quick. As soon as it sees me, it flies off. Um, Really, it doesn't matter if it eats some fish. The fish breed so fast. Um, there's so many fish. It, it, uh, it doesn't really matter if the heron has a few. But I was researching, and herons do tend to eat amphibians and other things more. And uh, they only tend to eat fish if they can reach them from the shallow water. So really, the heron isn't too much of a problem. Um, but uh, one day I'll film it and get it on film for you. But we, it does come quite often. We saw it earlier today. So it's getting a bit dark now. So I can't really do any more filming today. Uh, and there's loads of storm clouds gathering. Um, this uh, amber weather warning for wind. Um, so it's getting darker than normal, but at least it's not frozen anymore. Anyway, um, I'm going to have to do all the filming I can do for today. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And if you press the little me, which is somewhere down there, you can see all of my other videos and I shall see you next time.